the Savage Nation. Hey, Dr. Savage, uh, I have a couple points. First of all, in your interview, President Trump said, not surprisingly, that people are coming over to his side in stage, okay? I am not surprised, okay? I feel like four years from now, after he's done whatever he does, it's going to be good. I don't think anyone is going to say, I wish I had voted for Hillary. Okay, and also, second point, pretend you're a military person. Pretend you're overseas defending your family. Who are you going to fight for, Hillary or freaking Trump? Okay, we're not going to comment on the comments. 30 seconds or less, try to, try to think about what you're saying before you say it and, and, and make it simple, and we're going to go one caller after the other. As you can imagine, the lines are flooded after such a big interview. Everybody wants Donald, uh, but not everybody gets Donald because he knows who. He's loyal to those who have been loyal to him from the beginning in plain English, and he doesn't forget those who stabbed him in the back for years running, and then all of a sudden, oh, I always liked Donald. I, I, I have nothing against him. Why, we're good buddies. Uh, uh, we, you did nothing against him. No, 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 no. We're good friends now. Uh, okay, that's that. Again, we know about the Zika virus that is suddenly threat the Zika virus, sorry, that's threatening, especially pregnant women. And many people don't know what to do. They're terrified. Uh, the first thing you do is don't go to those countries where the virus is uh, prevalent right now. Do not travel to the Caribbean. Do not travel to Tahiti. Do not travel to south of the border, especially Central America, where Obama seems to cull as many illegal aliens as he can and dump them on us by the train load. I mean, in any other time, it's a crime against the nation, what he did to us. But I can't go back and forth every time I mention this man's name. Instead, I got so mad, I tried to get even. And I wrote a quick book. Well, it took me only a year, this one. Actually, it took me 20 years. It's an e-book called Diseases Without Borders. It's based on what is known about boosting your own immune system. In order to get it out, I put it up as an e-book. And you can see the link on michaelsavage.com. It only went up at the beginning of the show. The book's only out for a week. Uh, in a week. I'm sorry. I'm so excited today. I can hardly keep up with myself. <laughs> it's it's only going to be out in about a week, in early February. Diseases Without Borders, Boosting Your Immunity Against Infectious Diseases from the Flu and Measles to Tuberculosis. Even though tuberculosis is a bacterial infection, you can still stimulate uh, your immune system. And shocking already, the book is number six in the Kindle store. I don't know how that happened. It only, it only got listed today. It's number six. In the Kindle store, that's amazing, on the health and fitness. And uh, I, I, this is a book that even liberals really ought to read. If they want to wait for Sandra uh, uh, Guppy Fish, go ahead. Maybe Sandra Guppy Fish will, uh, one of these days, write a book that you can actually read. Disease Without Borders. KKOH, Abe, you're up. What's on your mind? Go ahead, please. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Savage. I was just curious. I didn't have a chance to listen to the entire interview you had with Donald Trump, but I was curious of what your take would be on the question that people raised with respect to who he's going to possibly have a chance to pick for a Supreme Court justice with uh, Ginsburg, Breyer, and maybe somebody else. I don't know. So you're asking me to ask him a question after he left the show? Not after he left the show. I didn't get a chance to even hear if you'd asked. So why are you on? Why are you on the air? What What did the call screener put you up for? What was he? What, didn't you tell him you didn't listen to the interview? I didn't get a chance to. You didn't get a chance to tell my call screener you didn't hear the interview. Not that I'm aware of. No, I didn't. Did he ask you? Did he Did he ask you? Did you hear the interview? I mean, I'm not I, mad at you, but I don't understand how I can answer such a question. He is not here. I am, a screener I, should have asked if you heard the interview. Okay, let's move on. KBET, Bonnie, welcome. What's on your mind? Well, what put me over the vault, and all along I've been for Trump, got a little rocky on the conservative issue. His military question, that did it. I'm done. I know who I'm voting for. Well, you, you could, well you're leaving me in the dust. What military question are you referencing? About the leaders like... MacArthur and Patton is who he would put in place. So you, you heard me ask him this question. Here are the exact words. Mr. Trump, would you agree on this show to only appoint a combat experienced veteran as defense secretary? I can recommend Senator Tom Cotton for the job. And what was his answer that you recall, Bonnie, to the best of your memory? Mm, that Well, that he he wanted military men like George Patton and Douglas MacArthur in place. And, th and, and so when you heard that, you said... You were on the fence for Trump till you heard that? 
Okay, well, you made your point. That's very good. Interview made her come off the fence for Trump. KLIF, in the great city of Dallas, Texas. Kelly, go ahead and make your point on the Savage Nation. How are you today? What's on your mind, Kelly? Um, well, I'm one of your 2% that is coming off of the fence for Trump. I have been a conservative, and I'm sick and tired of it. Absolutely sick and tired of it. Um, well, wait, wait. You've been a, you, wait you, you're no longer a conservative. You've become a what? Pardon me? You're not a conservative. What have you become then? I, I don't know. I think maybe I'm trying to become a nationalist. Um, okay. I'm so you, you're, te you're accepting my definition of Donald as a mild, he's a mild nationalist. And you're coming off the fence. Who were you supporting prior to today? Cruz. Okay. Um, we, we don't have to nail Cruz to a cross in order to support Trump. But the fact is, is that Cruz supported TPP, which Obama wanted desperately. And without Cruz's support, which was critical, I don't think Obama would have gotten that trade authority. Do you know that? Exactly. I do. I do. Now, I don't know how many people know how a significant... I don't know how anyone can call themselves a true conservative and omit the inconvenient truth that Ted Cruz, their candidate, gave Obama on a silver platter what he wanted, which is special trade authority, which will open up even a greater trade imbalance with the United States of America, Kelly. I thank you for listening so carefully. That opens up one line at 855-400-7282 on the Savage Nation. If you care to comment on the, the Trump interview or any of the news items that I've touched on, such as teen refugee arrested and stabbing death of Swedish social worker, will the GOP establishment steal the 2016 nomination from Donald Trump, and all of the other topics, you can do so by calling that one number back in a minute. I want to digress for a minute. You know, we're all into politics, but none of us live forever. And, you know, Teddy, my dog, is the mascot of the Savage Nation. He's been with me 11 or 12 years. I don't remember. Time has just gone by in the blink of an eye. I don't remember. He was on stage with me when he was a little black puppy. Many of you remember from the chaos of our audience and the Enverones. I was live at the Concord Pavilion, now known as the Chronicle Pavilion. 7,000 of you were there. Teddy was on stage with me. It seems like it happened yesterday. I was out there with the red Cadillac. Well, you know, time, gravity, etc. And uh, they're a reflection of our own lives. The last one I lost died soon before my mother did. And I, I remember it because I think that looking back, it was God's way of preparing me for that. And now Teddy's sick. I don't know how long he's going to live. You know, people say it's not a big deal, a mitral valve, and uh, uh, what do you call it? It's a. Uh, um, a murmur, heart murmur. So I took him in for the cardiogram yesterday. This all started because of the teeth. After he removed some teeth on Wednesday, and they don't know if the dog's strong enough to take anesthesia, and they see if the heart's strong enough. And the most wonderful veterinarian, I didn't even know you know such people existed, with a specialty in pet cardiology, comes in with equipment. And it's not a big deal to those of you who don't have dogs, but for those of you who do have been through it, understand what this means. And the last cardiogram I saw was my own. And before that, my father's, before he died, I'm still kicking, by the way. Mine, the last I checked, was good. I did an stress EKG. I, I don't know how, but it showed no abnormalities. I mean, every time I go, I think I'm going to die on the treadmill. Or that they're going to tell, tell me that this is the way to the operating room. And they say, no, you're fine. I don't know how. With the, with the stress I'm under and the abuse, basically, of my life on, on my psyche, on my body, I keep on kicking. So I, you know, I keep on ticking. But the thing is that Teddy goes in. And you know, dogs are innocent. They don't know it. They're having fun, running around. I'm talking to them. So at first, you know, blah, blah, blah. but then the three women held him down. That unto itself was a meta metaphor. But they hold him down because she has to control him. You know, otherwise the, the the cardiogram doesn't read right. And something odd happened. He let out a high pitched cry, a low one, that I had never heard come out of his being in all the 11 or 12 years I've known him. I mean, I heard him cry if you step on his foot, God forbid, which happened maybe once someone did on his little toes. I heard him squeal, right? But he's a quiet dog. This is a quiet animal. This is not a barker. During a show, a bark of someone, you know, he let out a high-pitched whine. It sounded like a, on a level of a porpoise, you know, like almost sub-hearing level. 
And it got to me. It was made for me because I couldn't touch him. They said, don't touch him because every time you do, he squirms. So I kept talking to him. He started to let out a whine, a low one, that, you know, cut me to pieces. And I I listed, I put it up on a movie of it, a one-minute little video of it on, Mike, on uh, sorry, Facebook.com, Michael Savage. Why? I'm exploiting my dog, that's why. I'm exploiting Teddy. No, because so many of you come to love him like your own, and many of you wrote the most beautiful things imaginable. And um, I don't know what else to say other than thank you. He's a beautiful little animal. Tomorrow is the big day because I was wrecked bad enough last night. Tomorrow is going to be the worst because he gets the anesthesia and the surgery. And she said to me, even healthy dogs die under anesthesia. I'm not going to lie to you. Okay? So tomorrow is that. But the show must go on, and I will go on. And that's it. That's the story. You won't know about it until after it's over. Back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Trump questions no one's ever asked him, and, and, the, and the, the, the diehards call me up, oh, you asked him softball questions. Oh, he's not specific enough. When is he going to stop saying generalities and speaking in generalities and start being specific? Well, I don't know how much more specific you can be. I said to him uh, a number of things that are, uh, no one's ever asked him before, like people call you a bully, and I say we need a tough negotiator to beat our enemies. I say the Americans have been wimped down and think we need a nice guy in the Oval Office. And I said, Mr. Trump, how will you appeal to all of these brainwashed fools? That's not specific enough? That's a softball question? Who asked him a tougher question than that? Who's ever said, Mr. Trump, some people are calling you a bully? Nobody. I said, Mr. Trump, would you agree on this show to only appoint a combat experienced veteran as defense secretary? I said, I can recommend Senator Tom Cotton for the job. You heard his answer, didn't you? That's a softball question? I mean, what is wrong with you people? What world do you live in? Muslim refugees in Europe, Mr. Trump, are raping and murdering. What would you do to reverse Obama's flooding of America with violent and diseased immigrants? He answered the question. Mr. Trump, Bernie Sanders is a naked far-left radical. Some would say communist. I know the type from New York streets. What would you say to my audience about Bernie Sanders, and how would you overcome the hordes of poor and immigrants who hate the rich? That's a softball question. Well, give me an example of a hardball question that you would have asked them if you had a radio show. I know what you'll say to me, like questions that no one wants an answer to. Questions that for which there is no answer, number one. And number two, a question no one even cares about. Let's take the real callers, the real listeners to the Savage Nation. Rich on KLIF in Dallas, go ahead, please. Yes, Michael. Your interview was excellent, and just as you said a few seconds ago, you did ask the hard questions, and he gave you good honest answers. And I'm going to say this right now, Michael Savage, that Trump is going to win, and the reason why he's going to win and be successful is the same reason why you are. You guys research, you guys know what you're talking about, you speak with compassion and passion, and you speak with authority. When you listen to Trump, and, you, and I listen to you, it's just magnificent to see how you present things and how well it's being received. So Trump will win, and I do hope you reconsider taking a position. I know the flight from Washington back to San Francisco every day will be difficult or when you have to do it, but we need people like you with Trump to make America better, Mike. Well, he, first of all, he didn't win. Secondly, he didn't offer me any position. Uh, let, let's be clear about that. And number three, if he wins, I'll, I'll ask him if I can use Air Force Two to go back and forth. And, and that would be the only condition for the job. I'll do it for a dollar a year. Uh, but he's got to give me Air Force 2 or Air Force 3, and I'll go back and forth. <laughs> I don't know if that would even be legal. Who knows what? I mean, I think they only use Air Force 2 for Michelle's parties around the world. I think it's only allowed to be. It's the party plane. Air Force 2 is the official party plane for the White House right now. It's used not by the vice president, but I think they bring in entertainers and they're, they're pet trainers and whatnot, and they go on vacation. But thank you for the compliments. I appreciate that. Uh, am I lobbying for a job? Is that why I'm... Being nice to Trump? Nah, not really. I don't think I'm made for a bureaucracy. I don't think I could take it. To be Irish about it, 
I don't think I can take it. I love the Irish accent. No, I don't think I could take it.